Hi everybody, it's been a while. Every time I do a video on art supplies, which is usually every video, <laughs> People know that I have a collection of them, so I always get a bunch of requests to use all my historical art supplies in one piece. Or I'll get a request to use all my novelty art supplies on one painting. And it's a good idea, but you guys know me, I have absolutely zero chill in this world. And it's like, why stop there? Why, why stop at just my historical or my novelty art supplies? So today, for every single person who's ever requested that I use my whatever art supplies in one piece, today I'm gonna make your dreams come true. Today, I am going to challenge myself to use every single paint that I own. And I just want to make it clear, I'm not talking about just my acrylics, just my oil paints, just my watercolor. No, I am like talking about every single paint that I've collected over years and years and years. Everything you have ever seen on this channel, thousands of dollars worth of paint, tons of different mixtures. I mean, you name it, every single paint. So this will be fun, I think. <laughs> And before we get into it, if you haven't subscribed with notifications, that would help me immensely grow and it would like please our YouTube overlords. Please be sure to do that. This is probably going to be one of the most time consuming videos I've ever created. So let's just jump right into it. Welcome everybody to my paint drawer. This is where I store a mass majority of paint. Out of the six drawers, five of them are full of paint. Ever since I moved to a much bigger place and I have much more space to store stuff, I have absolutely become a paint hoarder, and you're gonna see that now. So let's see what's behind drawer number one. These are some of my cheap and unused acrylics. We got the dollar store ones, unopened ones from Culture Hustle, all of my metallic and specialty paints. I hope these are all closed. This leads us to drawer number two. Oh, these are my oil paints, Never mind. We'll come back to that one. This leads to acrylic drawer number two. In here, we have medium-sized acrylic, acrylic that came in a set. So got a scraggler, got my large acrylic. On to drawer number three. Here we have my acrylic that I should probably throw out, but for some reason haven't. My neon and very high-end acrylic. We're only on drawer number three and already we have a very large selection of paints to get through. Next up will be drawer number four. This is my oil paint. In this drawer, we have my historical paint, my somewhat expensive oil paint. Actually, I have two of those. We got the medium tubes of oil paint. We got the large tubes of oil paint. Drawer number four or five of oil paint. Uh, for this one, we have my small tubes of paint that came in a set. Oil paint that I never use. We got my incredibly expensive designer oil paint. Ah, even more expensive oil paint. Just add that. Oh. You just add that in. And I think if I remember correctly, there's a watercolor booklet behind this thing for some reason. And next up, we have this little drawer that actually used to hold all of my paint. This one surprisingly doesn't have much. It only has three watercolor palettes and a random black that I haven't opened up. I'm gonna add these to the pile. So here's all the paint from room number one. Now we are in studio numero dos. These drawers are where I keep my smaller art supplies, like my pencils, pens, things like that. And that includes my entire watercolor collection. So here we go. <laughs> in this drawer, I have my high-end watercolors. I have the entire Artiza collection of watercolors. I have a random travel watercolor palette. Add that to the list. I've made a video about pretty much everything in this drawer, so you probably recognize a lot of them. This one doesn't have too much. Oh my God, I forgot all about this. Do you guys remember this when I made that watercolor watch? It's literally a little watch that you wear. Ah, I love this little guy. I forgot all about him. I'm so happy I found him. Ah, novelty and historical paints. At the very bottom, down here, we have my Crayola drawer. This one only has like one palette. I literally just broke this drawer. Oh my God. And finally, this brings me to my last closet. And the only paint I have in here is this broken palette. And the final thing, just because I love to like torture myself, consider this like the whipped cream on top. I don't even know why I have this. I don't even like this paint that much. I also have this gigantic, very large thing of cheap Walmart paint. There's a lot.
now that it's all laying out in front of me and now that I'm getting like a visual idea of how much I'm actually gonna have to use, this is insane. Why, why did I talk myself into doing this? I'm kind of having a crisis, like debating, should I even do continue on with this video right now? And if I had to guess right off the bat how much paint I have, like as far as like a dollar worth, I would probably say I spent about thirty-five to four thousand dollars worth of paint. For the canvas, I had to get a special watercolor canvas because I'm going to be mixing lots of different mediums, lots of different colors, pigments, types. I mean, you name it, all of that is gonna go on one canvas. And unlike a regular canvas, which doesn't really absorb water very well, this canvas is made special for watercolor. So all my watercolors will be able to actually go on this. Starting off with this Peerless watercolor booklet thing. There we go. So I just finished up the large bulk of watercolor that I have, which are individual tubes. And so far, it doesn't look like it has that many colors. And I used a lot of colors. I spent a whole hour just applying different colors. There's not much left of the watercolor. I just have a few palettes that I'm gonna work on and apply. I have this gouache thing that I made a whole video on my 100 year old watercolor, my rarest blue in existence, and then my personal favorite, my watercolor watch. This thing is so awesome. I'm just gonna start wearing this all the time. Always. I love it. It's so cool. Next runner up will be my acrylic paints. The reason I have to use acrylics first instead of oil paint is because you cannot put acrylic on top of oil. It won't last, it won't dry correctly, it'll flake off, it'll just cause a lot of problems. But on the other hand, you can put acrylic first on top of oil, just not the other way around. First giant tub of acrylic down, three more to go. Last box of acrylic, here we go. For some reason, it feels like the acrylic went by really, really fast in comparison to the watercolor. And by the way, he's looking pretty good. Like, I'm really happy with the layer of acrylic. Yay. Okay, let's see, I'll just put like a big old glob right here. Oh, now he has a unibrow. <clears throat> Before this video continues, there is something very important that we need to talk about. This shirt and how awesome it is. It's so cool. I don't even know how to properly style it, but I just love to wear it and I love the way it makes me feel. 
So yes, this leads us to probably what is going to be the most time consuming aspect of this whole entire process, dealing with the oil paint. Unlike my acrylics, unlike my watercolor, both of which I can easily clean with water, that is absolutely not the case when it comes to oil paint. Every single tube that you see here, I'm gonna have to unscrew it, put it on a palette, thin it out with paint thinner, my lungs are gonna love that. And once I'm done with each individual color, I'm gonna have to get a paper towel and physically scrape off every single paint because oil paint is notoriously hard to clean. So this definitely will be a lot of work for me. Careful, don't pull the cord on me. So at this point, I've done my watercolor, done my acrylics, done my oils, <clears throat> oils, and you're probably wondering what's left. And what's left is actually a type of paint that I'm not too sure about, like I don't have much knowledge on. It's fairly new to the market. I've only worked with this type of paint a handful of times. And that, my dudes, is my collection of hybrid paints. Just to be safe, because I don't know how it interacts with other paints, I saved this paint specifically to work on my edges. Okay, I can't believe I finished all that. <laughs> With the calculations, this leads me to a total of 564 paints. I've been making these types of videos for years now. So if you wanna see the whole playlist where I've done colored pencils, paints, markers, all that stuff, I will leave it down below. If you haven't subscribed with notifications, please be sure to do that. I gotta spend the night putting up this paint, so I will talk to you guys later. Bye.